Welcome to the Daily Coffee Pro by Map It Forward, friends. I'm your host, Lee Safar, and today on the podcast, we are asking the question, who sets the standard of professionalism in the coffee industry where you're operating? And before we get started, massive shout out to the Coffee Roasters Mastermind Group that is coached by Ante Bikic. We do some wonderful work in the Coffee Roasters Mastermind Group and we ask some of the very challenging questions, which one of them you're going to hear about in the next episode of the podcast. But if you would like to join the Coffee Roasters Mastermind Group, head to the show notes, click the link and see if there's a time zone that works for you. So. Today on the podcast, I want to ask the question, who sets the standard of professionalism in the coffee industry? And as somebody who's been in the industry for 20 years, I have in some instances seen the level of professionalism shift and on other levels, I have seen the levels of professionalism stay as archaic as they were from the day that I joined. And I came into the coffee industry after having been in the corporate world for eight years. And I can tell you, I was shell-shocked by what professionalism meant and didn't mean and have continued to be shell-shocked as I've moved through my career as a barista And as I came into small business ownership uh, in different roles over 20 years, but small business ownership is all I've done in the last six years. And I can tell you that the level of professionalism in the coffee industry is something that's different in different countries. And I have worked in Australia, I have worked in America, and I have worked in the UK, all in coffee and as well in the music business, but uh, primarily in coffee. Uh, And I can tell you that the standards of professionalism are dictated by the culture. And that's a very interesting thing to have observed. What I mean by that, and I should preface this by saying this discussion on this podcast came about because Sara Lale and I, uh, the wonderful host of our Middle East podcast, is in, which is in Arabic, brought this up in a discussion we were having for that podcast in the in the podcast. It wasn't off off air, it was on air. And we were talking about who determines the professionalism in the Middle East or for a particular workplace. Should it be the employees? Should it be the employer? And in thinking about it afterwards, I came to realize the culture determines a lot of what determines professionalism. Now, what I mean by that is Working in Australia in the coffee industry, I started as specialty coffee started to become a thing. And right at the beginning of my career in coffee, we didn't even know that the term was specialty coffee. But a few years in, we started to realize we were dealing in specialty coffee as opposed to just kind of Starbucks still existed here in Australia back then. It's very rare that there's a Starbucks now. But back then it was like it's Starbucks or it's specialty coffee. And as we started to differentiate between specialty coffee and, you know, the other kind of coffee, uh, we started to notice that customers, the coffee drinking culture was shifting with it. And when they would come to a specialty coffee shop and patron that specialty coffee shop, even if they didn't know that that's what it was called, they had a higher expectation of your professionalism rather than the expectation that they had of the other coffee shops that were serving not specialty coffee, what they determined was specialty and they wouldn't use the word specialty coffee they would say things like fancy coffee or artisan coffee so as we started to see this shift in the coffee drinking culture here in Australia we started to notice that in workplaces you had to have a higher degree of professionalism and what that meant was that 
You had to have latte art on your coffees. You had to have a clean workspace. You had to talk in a different way to customers. You had a level of assumed knowledge that you had to have about things like adjusting grinders and how to uh, brew coffee and the different brew methods and using metrics to measure. Because in the beginning of my career, we weren't measuring in specialty coffee. There were no in and out numbers. We weren't timing shots. But five or so years into my career, we were doing that. And so there was a different expectation based on where the culture was moving from a consumer perspective. And it was the choice of where you chose to work that would determine your level of professionalism. And that's when it started to become about the employer setting the level of professionalism. So that when you chose to work for a seriously established coffee business or hospitality business, the level of professionalism that you brought with that was different. You knew that if the the employer was taken seriously, whether it be by the media, whether it be by other people in the industry uh, or suppliers, you knew that if they had a better name, you had to be more professional because it reflected on their business and they just wouldn't tolerate it. Having said that, in America, when I worked in cafes in America, and this went for the UK as well, because the perspective around the value of coffee was different by the consuming public than it was here in Australia, coffee didn't have as great a value on it as it did. Now, in Australia, 10 years ago, I was paid around $30 an hour as a barista. In America, I was highly paid, and I'm saying that in inverted commas, uh, at $15 an hour because I was an Australian barista. Now, because the culture, the coffee drinking culture, didn't see coffee as this specialty kind of career or a legitimate career for quite some time, what that meant was that the level of professionalism, because it was a low-paying job, the level of professionalism that you were required to bring to your job wasn't assumed as something that was very high. You were of sorts dispensable. And if you left, it didn't really matter because there were many more people that would just want a job. That's all shifting because we have a major labor shortage. So in America and in the UK, because it wasn't seen as this this kind of way that consumers participated in the legitimacy of the career, whereas here in Australia it's con- it's perceived as a legitimate profession and it is becoming that way more and more in the US, but it hasn't been for a very long time. In Saudi Arabia, where Sada al Ale is based, the host of our show, the discussion was around the fact that across the Middle East specialty coffee is booming And so they have an opportunity to really determine their level of consumer engagement and the way that consumers perceive them as a profession, a legitimate profession. And across the board, what I have noticed is the more seriously customers perceive your profession to be, the more you have to step up in your level of professionalism. And so just to summarize, if you want your customers to treat you legitimately as a professional, you can contribute to that by being more professional and choose businesses that lean into. This is if you want to be a professional barista rather than just be, work somewhere where it's just a job. Choose somewhere where the customers perceive the legitimacy of what the product you're serving is to be a high standard. 
And then you bring your A game as a professional because it is expected of you. I hope that that feeds many discussions out there about who sets the standard of professionalism in the coffee industry. And yet again, another shout out to the fabulous Sara Alale, who I have the pleasure of having these wonderful conversations with on our Arabic podcast of the Mapper Ford Middle East version of the Daily Coffee Pro. Don't forget to subscribe, friends. Peace, love, and peanut butter. Have an amazing rest of your day.